Hey, what's going on guys? Hey, what's up you guys? It's Caboose bringing you another video and today what I got for you guys here as you can tell is gonna be my review for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Of course, we are gonna be keeping it completely 100% non-spoiler for this review. Before we jump into everything though, if you're looking forward to this film, if you cannot wait to see it, well then scroll down right now and hit that thumbs up button. Share your excitement with me. If you're new here and you wanna keep up to date on the latest and greatest in the MCU and wanna see some more reviews and reactions to upcoming trailers and movies coming out within the MCU, see you well then i got you covered on that so hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications to be immediately notified when a video goes live and with that being said let's jump in i am so excited to talk about this movie okay so dr strange in the multiverse of madness sees our titular character steven strange as he meets a brand new character in america chavez america chavez is on the run across the multiverse as she's being chased by some demon that wants to steal her multiverse dimensional hopping powers from her which would inevitably kill her steven has to figure out what's going on he has to protect this girl and he has to stop the multiverse from descending into to madness seriously this movie is a visually mind-bending trippy visceral non-stop action-packed thrilling experience i had so much fun with this movie and i'm very happy with how it turned out benedict cumberbatch is so good in this role i mean this dude owns the role of dr strange and is without a doubt for me one of the best casting that we've gotten in the mcu outside of the base avengers one of the best casting that we've got past phase one for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He owns it here. We've seen so much of Stephen Strange. His character has grown so much since his last solo outing. And now that he's back in the leading role again, he does such a good job. And also we get to see quite a bit of range from Benedict Cumberbatch as we're dealing with the multiverse. So we see several different versions of Doctor Strange. Benedict Wong as well, Wong is also fantastic in this movie. He's now the appointed Sorcerer Supreme. You heard that from Spider-Man No Way Home. And to be honest, the character deserves it he does such a great job as showcasing the character's nobility and as well the dedication that Wong has to the mystic arts and the people who are trying to learn from it and Kevin Feige is absolutely right this isn't the MCU anymore it is the WCU this is the Wong cinematic universe because honestly Benedict Wong he seems to be so passionate about Marvel Comics and the character that he's portraying and the world that he is trying to live in here. Benedict Wong is just having such a blast, whether it's him showing up for a quick minute in Shang-Chi or having that supporting role finally back in that spotlight within Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. He's having so much fun and he's put in 110% into this character. Then there's Soji Gomez as the brand new character being introduced into the MCU or I guess the WCU and she is playing America Chavez and honestly she's a star she plays an integral role in this film of course considering her powers and the things that she's capable of Sochi Gomez really makes a good first impression here at showing off a rather obscure character her powers look really cool when we get to see them visually she's a lot of fun when we get to play around with her multiverse hopping abilities she's addicted to pizza she's funny she adds some levity to the film and as well there's some representation here that the character adds that I think is great and a big step forward Forward for the MCU. And then there's Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch, and I mean, wow, this is tied right up there with the most she has had to do with this character, neck and neck with WandaVision. She is acting her ass off in this movie and feels like a genuine threat. She's almost terrifying during some scenes. I was expecting that she would put on a good performance here and that she would be great in the film given how great she was in WandaVision. You can tell that Elizabeth Olsen is all in on the Scarlet Witch character, but even with those expectations being so high, she surpassed them by a country mile. Her presence is felt throughout the entire film and there are things that she does that I was still surprised by given my expectations going in. Seriously, after you guys see this movie, we need to have a conversation as to where the Scarlet Witch lands on the villains tier list for the Marvel Cinematic Universe because oh my goodness is she up there as one of the best villains we've seen in the entirety of the MCU. Rachel McAdams is also back in this film returning as Christine Palmer and she plays a very interesting role in this movie. I don't want to spoil too much about what she does but I will say she's the emotional center of the film. She is the character that's going to bring Stephen Strange back to the ground but also help and feel the consequences 
to his actions. I'd be remiss though. We're talking about all these actors. We're talking about how great everybody is in this film, but I would be remiss if I'm not gonna talk about the guy in the director's chair for this film. Sam Raimi directed Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Of course, returning to superhero films since what he did with the Spider-Man trilogy with Tobey Maguire. And oh my goodness, his footprint is all over this movie. Not only does he have that ability to make superheroes freaking cool and do some badass stuff and be characters that are awe-inspiring, characters that we should celebrate and be excited to see on screen, but he also adds plenty of horror in this movie, which I was actually very excited and pleasantly surprised to see. It's not just cheap jump scares when I'm talking about horror. There are some jump scares, some of them work, some of them not so much, but there's some genuinely unnerving moments and some great horror added in even some body horror that I know anybody who's a fan of the genre would be very happy to see. And dare I say too, that this movie might even be the most violent MCU film that we've gotten to date. I am surprised with how much Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios let Sam Raimi get away with here. I'm not just talking about some cuts and some bruises, some intense action or anything like that. No, there are moments that made me squirm and there are moments that made me audibly gasp in the theater. It is that brutal sometimes. It was pretty much like Marvel Studios went to Sam Raimi and said, here, take the keys to this really expensive supercar, drive it around town, go nuts. All you got to do is bring it back without a scratch. And he did exactly that. The only problem is there were some extensive reshoots, at least that was reported late last year. And you can kind of tell where some of those reshoots happen and take place throughout the film. It sort of disrupts the pacing a little bit and it comes out of nowhere and you can start to see some green screen. You can start to see some missing visual effects or at least some unfinished visual effects. And it does affect the film a little bit. I wouldn't say it's too distracting to rip me out of everything, but there are moments where I was like, oh, that's that's definitely a reshoot. I think as well, another problem that I had with this movie is that Danny Elfman's score isn't really shining through the way that you would expect from Danny Elfman and his collaboration with Sam Raimi on the Spider-Man films with Tobey Maguire. It's not horrible by any means. It isn't the worst score I've ever heard. It's just not Danny Elfman at his absolute best, which was unfortunate considering, again, he's collaborating with Sam Raimi here. There's some cool electric guitar usage in there that's pretty kick ass and there's a musical cue that had me going crazy in the movie but it isn't a musical score that you would remember it's not a score where you're going to be humming it when you step out of the theater to be honest outside of a few key moments i didn't even notice how much of michael giacchino's score from the first film was reused here john matheson is the cinematographer for this film and you may recognize his work from something like logan or from x-men first class and he does a great job of making this look like a real movie i don't want to give too much crap to visual effects artists I think something like Spider-Man No Way Home looks perfectly fine. And honestly, the wizardry that goes on behind the scenes and the way that they make you live in those sound stages and the blue screen that surround them, the way that No Way Home still looks like a movie is honestly insane. And the amount of visual effects shots that are in there is something to be celebrated. But I will say the usage of practical effects, the usage of actual sets is something that was very exciting to see in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Something that I was pleasantly surprised by considering, yeah, there was quite a bit of overusage of blue screen or green screen in the last couple of MCU films. That's not to say that there isn't plenty of visual effects in this movie either, except it's just that there are times where you can see that they're standing on a set, like an actual built set. And that was nice. And I don't want to say much because of course I I'm not going to talk about spoilers here, okay? But the second act of this movie might be and I, I know sometimes i speak in hyperbole and i know sometimes people give me crap for it but i don't care dr strange in the multiverse of madness the second act for this movie might be the best second act from any marvel movie period i'll finish off by saying i i just cannot wait to see this movie again i cannot wait to see it in imax i want to see this on the biggest screen possible Overall, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness for me is a big win and a huge step forward for the MCU. And I look forward to where we're going to be going next. And I hope that Sam Raimi wants to stay involved and wants to work on more MCU projects in the future. The film is certainly not without its faults. I don't think it's perfect by any means. It has its problems, but the things that work, they are so exceptional that they completely outshine anything that may throw you off or things that you may be seeing as a negative. And with that, in my opinion, I'm gonna give Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness a nine out of 10. I cannot wait to see it again. And I cannot wait 
to talk with you guys about some spoilers and with that being said and now i'm gonna kick it to you guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section below are you looking forward to dr strange and the multiverse of madness if you're gonna be posting spoilers i'm, I'm watching you okay try to keep your thoughts non-spoilery if you've seen anything that's spoilerish if you've seen the movie already and you're watching this after it's come out let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below as well if you enjoyed my review if you could consider leaving a like rating on it it would show your support and i would really appreciate it i'm caboose and you can click on screen to make your way to one of the other videos on the channel or you can click my logo to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already you can also follow me on instagram and twitter those links are going to be in the description drop a like if you enjoyed leave a comment if you have an opinion and subscribe if you're new see you guys later